COVID years, as those of you who follow me on Instagram probably know, I have had two surgeries this summer. Uh, they were both small and also in my face, um, but they weren't fun, zero out of 10, don't recommend, but they also made me realize that in my many, many years of random and also vaguely constant doctor's appointments and medical procedures that I've come up with many different ways to help make these experiences less miserable. And I combined my advice with your advice in order to make this nice big resource pile for all of you to watch, experience, I don't know. Also, for other resources, if you are newly chronically ill or you're going to a lot of specialists, I do have a video titled What I Wish I Knew When I Was Going to Specialists or something vaguely similar to that. I'll link it for you in the description and up over here. Um, uh, yeah, that might be helpful for you, might be more helpful than this, might be less, I have no idea, but now both videos exist. So yeah, um, I like to introduce myself in every video, so I'm not gonna do that today, just for spice. If you wanna know who I am, too bad. I will do an audio description though. I am a white person in their early 20s with shoulder length, curly brown hair. I am wearing a gray undershirt and a navy blue button up that is open. I am sitting in front of a bookshelf and there are photos behind me on the wall. And for what it's worth, I definitely did not pre-film most of my videos for the month of August with the exception of maybe three or four and then chop off all of my hair. That would be silly goose behavior and I for sure would have had a little bit more foresight before doing that. Yeah, now before we get into the specific teeny tiny tips, the overarching ways to make doctors or dentists or any other visit that you need to go to less miserable, and I refuse to say fun because they, no, um, is communication and boundaries. I know, the worst things ever, but I always go into a visit with uh, complete honesty and if they don't quite know me yet, I'll be like, hi, I'm autistic and I get overwhelmed very easily. So if you could communicate with me absolutely everything that's going to happen and what it's going to be like and what you're expecting of me and please be patient with me because I probably have a lot of questions and this, yeah, let's just work together on this. That automatically sets up the expectation for them to communicate extra and keep you entirely in the loop with what's going on throughout the experience. Experience. I do find that younger practitioners do this more automatically, um, so they must learn trauma-informed practices in their education for becoming doctors. I don't know about that, but that's what it feels like. Either way, it's still really great to just cover your bases just in case. And also you don't have to be like, hi, my name is autism. You can, <laughs> you can just say that you get overwhelmed very easily or that you have anxiety. You can change that script to whatever best fits your needs and experiences. It's also really great to come up with a way like at the dentist to be like, yo, I need to stop for just a second or like, can you just give me a moment so that you both know what those expectations are in case you do need to use them. And if setting boundaries is very difficult for you, that is okay. That is super, super normal. Everybody is bad at setting boundaries. I have a great video about that up here for you as well. Um, also to touch on a little bit of intersectionality stuff, my pronouns have changed um, and I am being misgendered in every single office that I go to um, at a place where I'm already very nervous and overwhelmed. And often that is the thing that pushes me over the edge. And I actually talked to one of my doctors about this a few weeks ago and I was like, you know, this is how I'm feeling. And she went, oh, should I just put it in your chart? And I learned that a lot of doctors can and will put pronouns in your chart and flag them. So the doctor or any doctor or nurse, whatever, coming in will see your chart and probably gender you correctly, which helps a ton with trust and feeling safe in a space. Sometimes doctors don't see your chart until they've been in the room with you for like two minutes. Um, so they might mess it up at first, but asking them to put it in there is a, at least one way that you can gain some control in that situation. So you don't have to awkwardly be like, sorry, I uh, use they, them or anything like that. Um, also, if they do mess it up and you have a hard time, being like, hey, actually I use these pronouns. You can innocently just go, hey, um, are my pronouns in the chart? I can't remember which offices I've changed them in and which ones I haven't. As a nice little reminder for them to, I don't know, check it. Um, you know, that, that can work. Some other things in the realm of advocating for yourself that I also recommend, and you guys also recommended to me, is being very clear when things hurt. Like for example, during my most recent surgery, something hurt and I went, ah, that hurt. And he went, oh, sorry, hold up. And then he put in more numbing stuff. And then I didn't feel the rest of the procedure at all whatsoever. And we had a full conversation about dogs. Um, if I had not said anything, I would have just suffered. And that is no fun. Nobody deserves that. When I got my wisdom teeth out, I asked if I could skip the laughing gas and not have any masks put on my face until I was unconscious. And they said, sure. And that made me a lot less anxious going into it because I felt like I could breathe. And then after the fact, I was also less groggy because laughing gas does that apparently. Um, somebody also said that IVs can be moved if they're driving you up the wall, just ask. Um, and you are also so of course welcome to ask for any pain meds or any things that you may need. Like 
I understand the feeling of I want to be the least needy person and I kind of just want to disappear into the floor and I hate having needs and whatever. Or like, I don't want to ask too many questions. I might annoy them. But it is their job to make sure that you are comfortable and that you know what's going on with your own body and health. And frankly, if you're extra nervous and uncomfortable and you don't have your needs met, you're not going to heal as quickly as you would without those issues. So it's in your best interest on every single level to just go out on a limb and do it. So if you need to practice scripts beforehand or have them like in your phone so you can just like hit an AAC thing and it'll say it for you, go for it. That's totally great because advocating for yourself is so, so important. However, it works best for you. This also includes making lists of all the questions you have and going in with them and being like, hi, I need to know what's going to happen and how and when and why and how does that work? And you know, all of these questions and you can ask them and they won't get annoyed with you, I promise. And again, if you are uncomfortable or unsure or tense the whole time, you're not going to get the care that you eventually need. And so it's going to be worse off for your health in the long run. I also highly recommend bringing a trusted person or people with you. Obviously, in a lot of cases, they can't go into the operating room or the appointment with you, especially with COVID, but having them there before and after and during, if possible, is going to help you a whole lot. My two surgeries this summer, um, even though I can drive myself, uh, my mom came into the waiting room with me and she signed me in and she did all the major talking and she paid attention to like aftercare or whatnot. So I could just reserve my energy for the procedure. And after the fact, she made sure to ask the people to get me ice and to figure out all the billing stuff and get me home safely. So I didn't have to think about any of those things. I could just be a little stressed blob, which was very awesome and helped me a whole lot. For people who have a hard time advocating for themselves and their needs, having somebody you're close with in the recovery room with you can make a huge, huge difference because, well, they can advocate for your needs. Also, in general, you obviously feel more relaxed if you have a safe person or somebody that you like in the room with you. Another huge, huge thing is obviously planning ahead. I know that you probably know this one, but a big part of anxiety is about the not knowing of things. So research the location. What does it look like? A lot of places have pictures of their waiting rooms online. Um, what cool smoothie places are near there? What does the parking lot look like? You can also research the people. What are they like? What did they specialize in? Sometimes you can find little nuggets of information that will help you make small talk easier. Like, oh, we went to the same college or something like that. You already know small handfuls of things that you have in common. Also. I personally don't do this, but some people will Google the procedure that they're going to have done and watch videos of it beforehand so they know what the entire thing looks like. I don't do that. Most surgeries can be found somewhere online if you uh, want to, though. I also highly recommend bringing something to do in the waiting room and the recovery room to distract yourself from any anxiety so you're not just sitting there being like, I am about to have an appointment. What are they going to stab me with today? Like, it's much easier to do that. And also have something to look forward to afterwards. Helps a lot. My first surgery, I spent the entire time thinking about how we were gonna go to Joanne's after to pick out a new paint by number. And I was wondering what type of paint by number I was gonna get. Um, the second surgery is a little more realistic. And instead I thought about what movie I was going to watch and what popsicle I was gonna eat when I got home. And that helped with nerves a whole lot because I had something to look forward to in the future. Also, prepping your safe foods in advance, whether it's a surgery or even just a doctor's appointment, these things can all be very overwhelming. So make sure that you have your comfort foods prepped and easily available to you so you don't just go, eh, I'm too tired to make food and then skip a meal or two because obviously that's gonna make you feel way worse. Um, even if that means just moving like two boxes of mac and cheese from the basement to the kitchen, that's still, that's still a step and it's gonna help you in the long run. When it comes to minimizing discomfort during procedures, I am so blessed in that my last two surgeries were dental ones in which I was wildly conscious the whole time, which is obviously incredibly delightfully lovely and such a fun experience to um, make direct eye contact with somebody as they are doing surgery inside of your face. But anyway, it means that I have tips for you. First of all, music, 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 music. I always listen to music one earbud in and one earbud out at the dentist, especially during procedures, and I usually close my eyes. So then I'm able to focus more on the music and pay attention to that and kind of forget about everything in my surroundings. And it helps me so, so much. My personal favorite song choices are either just like straight bop after straight bop or musical soundtracks because that more easily transports your brain elsewhere. I've also been known to bring a stuffed animal or two into appointments and keep it on my lap, um, which is a really nice comfort. I brought one into surgery when I was little and it's kind of just become a tradition since then. When I got my wisdom teeth out, they actually, so with wisdom teeth, they have to strap you into the chair because anesthesia makes you go all flimmy floppy. And so you would just like slide off the 
the chair. Um, and they strapped in my bear with me, which like weirdly meant a lot. It was kind of really sweet. I do know that they were less forgiving with one of my friends when she tried to bring a stuffed animal into her LASIK surgery. They made her give it to her mom, but her mom was smart and shoved it into her sweatshirt pocket so that my friend could still hold it during the surgery with her secret sneaky bunny. She was very proud of it. Also, speaking of friends who have experience with LASIK surgery, that is an eye surgery. Um, she knew that she was going to probably have a panic attack. So she just asked her doctor to prescribe a single dose of Xanax, which she took right before the surgery and that chilled her out. And then she was totally fine during the surgery. So that is also an option if you really need it. Another way to minimize discomfort for yourself during a procedure is when they go, this is gonna hurt a little bit, do tiny stims or big stims, whatever you need, but ones preferably that aren't going to get in the way of what they're doing. Um, so for pain, I highly recommend more physical stims that are going to give you sensory input because it helps to distract from the pain that you're experiencing. Um, so it's significantly less bad. You're in less pain because you're focused on a different sensory input. So for example, during the numbing portion of my surgeries, um, I had my hands down kind of on my lap, which was out of the way of the dentist, and I could just pat and or slap my thigh really hard um, as alternative sensory input to pay attention to. If you close your eyes and focus on the music and do leg slapping, you really don't notice the pain very much. It's pretty much gone. Um, yeah, those are kind of the major things that I've done to survive during procedures and appointments. Please let me know if you have any more. Um, and the last teeny tiny category I have is advice from somebody who has done post-op recoveries way too many times. If your doctor recommends icing the site of an injury um, or surgery after the procedure, take that recommendation up like six notches because the day after I got my wisdom teeth removed, I had an ice pack on each side of my face pretty much nonstop until bedtime with the exception of like little breaks. So, you know, you don't want to get frostbite. That's bad. Um, but not only does icing things minimize pain in the moment because obviously that's the worst and you deserve to have minimized pain, but icing also decreases the swelling or early on swelling from happening altogether. And a spider just climbed down my camera lens. Bro, hated that. Um, a lot of the pain that you experience is from the swelling of the tissue because your tissue is like, um, how dare you poke me with stabby things? And so if you just decrease the swelling as it's happening or make it not happen altogether with icing, you're gonna heal a lot faster because there's less to actually heal if that makes any sense. So I cannot recommend icing enough. It is magical. The other thing is pain medication. If you are told to take ibuprofen or Tylenol post-op, layer them. So like an hour and a half before your ibuprofen is gonna wear off, take a Tylenol. And then an hour and a half before the Tylenol is gonna wear off, take an ibuprofen, et cetera, et cetera. I'm personally the kind of person who's had a lot of very bad experiences with medication. We don't need to get into that right now. Um, not related to the literal medication, but more like who is giving them to me and, and why they're... Yeah, anyway, so I will usually not use a lot of or any medications after the first 24 hours post-op if I can stand it. Um, my most recent surgery, I only had to have maybe three doses of meds the whole post-op period because icing pretty much fixed all the problems. Um, but then the one I had before, the day after I did a New York City trip, which I planned terribly, and I did a med cycle all day and I was able to function completely and totally normally. So yeah, also that helps recovery a lot because if you feel a little bit normal, you're more likely to eat a lot and do the things that your body needs to do to heal. Um, and I trust you to know and figure out the balance for yourself. I just thought that I would throw that out there, all the experiences and options for you to choose from because that's what I'm here for, I guess. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's kind of all I have for today's video. As with all of my advice videos, again, please put your experiences, ideas, tips, etc., in the comment section. I would love to have more tips for myself because I know that I spend way too much time being miserable in doctor's offices. Like, it's bad. And yeah, as always, thanks for listening. Thanks for learning. Remember, it's never too late to start over. And I look forward to seeing you, my dear, in the next one.